Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining me. I'm excited about this video because I'm going to be covering my favorite topic of the ascension and awakening process and that is the process of making the unseen seen. And I know that a lot of you <clears throat> spend a lot of your time looking for confirmation that there is, you know, these guides and these angels and these cosmic selves around you supporting you and participating in, or in your reality in a way that you're not really aware of. And I also know that at the beginning of a lot of your awakening, you experienced a significant paranormal event and, you know, maybe you stopped having those experiences and you're looking to get re-engaged in them. I do know that in 2022, the energy that's being set in place now allows our guides and our angels um, and our ancestors to have a lot more access to our physical space than they had for such a long time, for a very long time. And I know that your guides will purposely have you interested in those paranormal experiences because it triggers a lot of things in your awakening that are going to accelerate the remembrance process. So you remember that your physical senses in the earth plane have limitations. You remember that vibrationally you can only experience things at your current vibration. As you make the effort to shine your light on what is unseen, you start to reclaim little bits of yourself. And then when all things are said and done, you are left with a full understanding and appreciation for who you are and what this experience is. So just real quick, <clears throat> um, I, in 2010, I woke up late 2009. In 2010, um, my awakening was really getting going and you know my wife and I were out stargazing not looking for ETs didn't even know that that was a thing really we we're just appreciating and admi admiring the universe um, and you know after you awaken it's like you're doing those things for the first time in that moment we had a light ship approach us very clearly not from this place um, you know and then it took off before it took off it multiplied into four different crafts and then um, all of them sped away. So that was something that provided a lot of fuel for my journey. And then the pursuit of recreating that experience accelerated my awakening more so than what would have happened otherwise. So I was able to recreate that experience a lot of times. Um, I was ha able to have a lot of different unique visitations like that. Um, prior to becoming a Akashic Records practitioner. Something you should know, if you do make the effort to go out there and put yourself in a position to have some kind of display or show in the sky like that, um, you need to understand that it's not always extraterrestrials that are doing that. Extraterrestrials are one party who might engage in an activity like that. So your higher self can send you a light ship and you'll visibly, visibly be able to see that in the sky. That doesn't mean there's ETs in there running the controls and you know, whatever. When you see a light ship in the sky, you might see um, an individual's, individual being's Merkaba. You might be seeing a future human. You might be seeing an ancient human. You might be seeing an archangel. There are a lot of sources who are actively engaging in humanity in that way, with humanity in that way. So it's important that you show up without any expectations on who or what or why you're seeing that. Second thing you should know, <clears throat> when you are looking for UFOs, when you're looking for light ships, it's important that you don't try to record the experience um, so yeah it would be nice to have like a visible record and confirmation of what you experienced or what you saw um, you know but that's not always the the best course of action to take um, yeah you might set up a camera you might experience or witness a ufo approach you or manifest itself in front of you um, you know and that's that's great but in my experience, the more attempt to physically record what's going on, the less successful you'll be. 
and you'll often find that you'll see something or experience something and it won't register on the device anyway. So maybe it is your path to record some evidence, but if it was me, I feel like the highest chance of being successful is going to be showing up without any of that stuff and without any expectations. Another thing you should know, <clears throat> it is just as easy for your guides or whatever party we're dealing with to manifest some interaction or exchange in your immediate physical environment. So, you know, you can have ET disclosure in your backyard, you can also have it in your front room. Um, either way is fine with the guides. They just want you to actively seek things that are strange, at least strange according to others. Just the pursuit of that is going to awaken a lot of different aspects of you. And then actually experiencing that thing you're pursuing, um, you know, is obviously a huge game changer. Another thing you should know about those experiences and get ready for them because they are going to be coming in abundance for those who are seeking them is that you should only seek and accept as paranormal things that are actually paranormal. Meaning that we aren't <clears throat> fooling ourselves into thinking that we have seen something from another world or another dimension when it's actually just a physical man-made object. It's very easy to distinguish the difference between the two. And trust me, when your guides really have things set up for you and really want to make this life-changing event happen, um, whatever you're shown is going to be so outside the boundaries of reality as we know it that there will be no doubt. But it does no good for yourself, it does no good for the guides if you see a satellite in the sky and then think that's a UFO. It does no good for you if you see a, uh, an aircraft in the sky and think that's a UFO from another place in time. You have to use your discernment, you have to use your experience and common sense as an old soul. We are looking to experience events that change paradigms at the foundation so that we raise ourselves into a higher vibration and, and, and never look back. So let's say you go out <clears throat> your backyard um, or maybe you took a trip into the woods and you're doing so with the intention of witnessing a UFO or some kind of light show in the sky. You're gonna be very excited. You're gonna wonder what it's like. Um, you have to try really hard to keep your expectations to a minimum because you don't really know what it's going to be like and how it's going to feel. You should approach that scenario with the curiosity of a child and then that way vibrationally you're automatically going to come into alignment with having that experience. So seeing a UFO is a great indicator of where you are vibrationally. You have to understand that <clears throat> our skies are loaded with these craft. Our immediate environment is just crowded with beings who are here observing and supporting and guiding you. Every time you're able to perceive or have a certain level of awareness over who they are, what they're doing and why they're there, it means that vibrationally you're in a really good spot. So let's say you go out um, you have the right amount of curiosity, you're really open-hearted, and there's no fear involved. You're not trying to witness them to prove something to yourself or someone else. You're not trying to record them. You're not trying to do those any of those ego-based things, but you still don't see a UFO. Well then, <clears throat> you know, frustration should not be a deterrent, or failure should not be a deterrent. It should mean that you should look at what you were doing in the state you were in and see if there's any way you can complement or upgrade vibrationally what you were holding at the time. And you have to understand that the universe is always looking for persistence. They're always looking for the souls who have the maturity 
to attempt something understanding that it's not the right time and then show back up in a good space. Be persistent, be disciplined, and understand it's about energy and vibration. It's not about rescuing you or proving anything to you. It's not about documenting something for others to see. It is about a personal experience between you and the family, one that changes your paradigm and lifts you into a state of remembrance that will allow all of these kinds of what is considered to be a paranormal event to become very normal. Anyway, thank you very much you guys for watching. Um, this is going to be a video topic that I'm going to come back to a lot. Um, you know, like I said, there's a lot of excitement going on behind the curtain at the possibility of interacting and exchanging energy with us in a direct way. And you should know as excited as you are at the potential of having these experiences, the guides on the other side are, are you know, just as excited or even more so than you. So we have you in separation, raising your vibration, shedding your density and vibrationally coming into a place where you can start to interact with these um, physical or non-physical beings that are resonating at a different frequency than us. But from their perspective, they are watching, waiting, patiently strategizing and anticipating a time where they can make themselves known to their loved ones again and have that reunion. So for both parties, it's about reunion. And that's what the ascension process is. It's a reunion with the soul. It's a remembrance of the higher self. And it's about embodying those aspects of you in the physical plane. Anyway, thank you very much, you guys. I will see you soon.